All right. I, I know I said I was going to look at Team Sonic Grayson next, but consider my curiosity peaked with this one. For the last couple of weeks, my Twitter feed, Twitch chat, a couple of Discord channels I frequent, there was always these seemingly random images of a goose being a total jerk. And I'm like, well, yeah, did you not see that one Rugrats episode? That goose was such an asshole. Or what about Hot Fuzz? That was more of a swan, true, but that bird ended up causing a lot of shit throughout anyway. Swan! swan! What was with the sudden fascination with geese? Was it a call to arms to have Geese Howard in Smash Ultimate? I'm sorry to say, he f***ing died. No, it was all because of this indie title making the rounds of the Nintendo Switch called Untitled Goose Game. And eh, I won't judge the title. Coming up with names can be obnoxiously difficult, so if it's called Untitled Goose Game, it's called Untitled Goose Game. It's currently, uh, at the time of this video upload anyway, one of the hottest selling games on the console, so I, I had to download it for myself and see what all the hubbub was about, and three hours later... Okay? This is the second game by developer House House, their previous project being the 2016 Push Me, Pull You, and never have I experienced such a large influx of emotion simultaneously while staring at the trailer for this game. How do these people eat? Are we a human cat dog? What sort of punishment from hell am I bearing witness to here? Untitled Goose Game places you in control of this goose, and this is a nice looking small village. And after a brief tutorial of what you can do, which is walk, run, flap your wings, pick up objects, and honk, <laughs> you set off to do stuff. This is the entire game. You enter the area, you get a checklist of what to do, and then you do it. And what you do is act like a total asshole to the local townspeople. For the farmer, you set off the sprinkler when he's walking by it. You drag his rake into a lake. You make him hit his thumb with his hammer, then steal his hat so that he can wear his visually tackier sun hat. In the shopping area, you give this poor kid nightmares by chasing him across the street, making him wear the wrong glasses, trapping him in the phone booth, trapping him in the garage if you're an extra douche, and then make him buy his own toy plane back from the shopkeep when she mistakes it for an item in her store. Actually, I don't know why this is just called Untitled Goose Game when the most obvious title is The Goose is a f***ing asshole. And you know what? It's true. Geese can be utter bastards from what I can hear. I like to think it's because they're not vindictive, it's just they, they lack empathy. But this is kind of the whole joke with the game and I'm struggling to decide if that's worth the $20 price tag. There is something to admire about the confident aura that emanates through the game's design that doesn't come off as pretentious. I don't think there's an underlying message that the developer is trying too hard to state some political or social commentary. No, this is about as straight to the point as you can get. You're a goose, you got a checklist of things to do, so go do it. About three hours later, you head back home, that's that, and that kind of simplicity can be a great selling point. Lord knows, a bunch of people have already given this game the go around. It's all over the place for a reason, and that's cool, but I don't know, man. I think the joke wears thin too quickly. The entire purpose of this game is to check off that list by being an absolute dick to those around you something you experience in its entirety in the first 10 minutes and is then stretched into a couple of hours. It's a very harmless game, I would say recreational even, or cathartic if you yearn to rage against society as a goose. You can't get hurt, there's no lives, and the worst the townspeople can do to you is shoo you away and then immediately forget about you. The attention spans of these folks are a fucking anomaly. Even when it's clear that you have ulterior motives at this point, you know I'm gonna yank that bench from under your ass again, right? No? Well then you deserve to fall. And that is likely what people find so endearing about this game. It's a continuous comedy, full of slapstick, but it only has one joke, and I think your enjoyment hinges on whether you find that joke constantly funny, and worth 20 bucks because there is not much to it besides that. To be fair, a lot of the objectives are unique to the respective areas. It's not like you're dragging a rake into a lake at the pub, although you do drop a pint glass into the canal. One area has you getting on camera in a TV store, the other requires that you masquerade as a porcelain goose so that you can get this cute little ribbon tied to your neck, uh, the pub requires that you drop a bucket on someone's head. Every area is unique in that sense, except for these sort of collectathons where you have to grab certain items and place them together. This is like the only objective these areas share, and being honest, weren't my favorite things to do. Really, anything involving placing objects in certain things was a little annoying because of the game's physics engine making it hard to be accurate. Especially in the time trials. Yeah, there are a couple of extra things to do besides following the list. Some you might even do by accident. I remember getting the idea to lock the farmer out of his yard to make one objective for me easier, and I ended up checking off one of the hidden objectives. If you just go ahead and finish the initial list, this game won't last more than two hours, so if you want more of your money's worth, I do recommend doing the extra stuff. Some of them are pretty funny and clever with how you have to think outside the box, or inside the box in one case. 
The time trials I could have done without. After you beat the game, you could reset the areas and try to complete all the objectives in that area under a certain time. It is an exercise of patience, not so much in planning the best route to get as much done as fast as possible, but because for one, even with the goose's limited moveset, trying to keep the pace up with its incredibly weighty movement can feel very sluggish. Trying to snag items in a hurry can also be a crapshoot because of how finicky the hit detection is for your peak and moving objects. If you're not careful with positioning and run into a person, you get forced into a different direction for a second, robbing you completely of control and that, that added up over time, God. There are also some things that are entirely random, or at least feel random. What townspeople are doing, their current position when you begin the time trial, your current route could come crashing to a halt because the old man decided to play darts and not sit on the bench when it's the last thing on your list and you have less than a minute left. All this is not a problem when you're just doing things casually, but in a speed run, so to speak, it's awkward and I feel unlike everything else, this wasn't part of the design, but rather not considering the design. Still, for as frustrating as it got, I ended up doing everything in this game. The regular list, the extra list, the time trials, I really wanted to get my money's worth with this one. It wasn't that time consuming for starters, anybody can do it with a little patience. And you do get this spiffy crown that you can get on your head if you manage to trick this lady into putting it on your noggin. Hail King Goose, admirer of golden bells and terror to little children, especially this pale looking one. I will rip off your head and place it on a pike in my throne room. I don't regret my time spent experiencing this. I had some fun for sure, but it is so much a one and done. I see no reason to replay this. And for 20 bucks, that's damning, considering I've played much more replayable indie titles for about half of that. It's great that the game is getting so much exposure and the developers yearn for that sort of press and to see everyone talking about it for better or worse is inspiring to other creators I'd imagine. In that sense, I'm happy for indie creators. I'm happy for Untitled Goose Game. I'm happy for developer House House. But the actual game itself is nothing to write home about. You won't lose too much time and money if you got the disposable income, but I'd still say wait for a sale. If you're not down with the premise or the joke, you just might find the whole thing shallow and unfulfilling. All right, well, I'm going to head back into Team Sonic Racing. My apologies for that little distraction. I just had to see why the hell people were talking about this game. I would like to request something for the sequel, if that's ever made. We need to steal the dentures off an old man. Imagine running around town looking like this motherfucker. I'd like that. Very much. Thank you all for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic night. And take care.